this. It's a shame we're not having a curry, but hey ho, we'll have to save that for for next time. Um, yeah, so so I, I'm the uh, co-founder and CEO of, of Ocean Bottle. Uh, I happen to have one right here. Surprise, a bit of product placement from the get-go. Um, we basically make reusable bottles that help save our oceans. And what's a little bit different about us, which Eric alluded to, is the fact that we're actually, um, we are using both blockchain and smart chips um, to make this possible. Uh, so I'd, I'd love to tell you a, bit, a little bit more about this, basically. So each of our products, when you buy one, actually funds collection equivalent to 11.368 kilograms of plastic. And we do this together with our partners, Plastic Bank, who I believe have actually been on the show before. Yeah, we had um, Sean a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, they're, they're, I mean, they're, they're absolutely awesome. Um, so it's, incredibly, it's incredible to be able to partner with them because what we do is we basically buy social plastic collection credits. And these digital tokens, uh, it's all powered by, by IBM uh, blockchain. And the digital tokens are available to plastic collectors on the other side of the world. So locals can come and exchange plastic for different valuable rewards, um, including both the digital tokens, which they can then swap for money, but also the products, uh, medical insurance, access to even microfinance. So there's both the environmental impact um, on the first hand, because you're stopping all of this plastic from reaching rivers and waterways. But on the second hand, there's a, a huge uh, social impact to this. Um, and just to provide a little bit of context, which I think is important, is that I think a lot of people think that ocean plastic might be, you know, we might be going in the right direction and um, the problem might be solved. I'm afraid to say, you know, we're still very much not. And it's around 22 million kilograms of plastic each day that pours into the ocean. Um, and it's actually estimated that in the next decade, ocean plastic is, is going to double, which I, I find staggering because if you look at the, you know, the 50 years we've had plastic so far, we're literally set to double the amount of plastic in the ocean over the next decade. Um, and a large a uh, portion of this comes from areas with very little waste management. So it's important to, to create a disruptive solution where we can set up collection points um, and where locals can come and actually exchange plastic for valuable rewards to, to stop it before it reaches the ocean at the source. Um, so that's sort of the ocean plastic side. And I suppose where we come in is we wanted to enable individuals all around the world to have an impact on this problem. So we now have the products in 88 different countries. Um, we've received the Green Product Award, the Red Dot Design Award. Uh, we also recently got the Forbes 30 and a 30 Award. And we would like this to become people's environmental weapon of choice so that not only are they having an impact on ocean plastic when they buy it, but they're also actually having an impact on the problem every single day they use it. And that brings me on to the next topic because um, we designed the bottle itself in Norway and we embedded an NFC uh, chip, an NFC tag in each bottle. Um, what that is going to enable us to do is, well, it will enable owners to basically fund more plastic collection for free when they refill at partner locations. So whether you go to your gym um, or your cafe or wherever you happen to, to go, if you bring this guy with you, that will contribute to funding more plastic collection and the setup of infrastructure. So what we envisage is that an individual can actually take their impact from that 11 kilograms when they buy the bottle, which is equivalent to a thousand plastic bottles in weight, um, to 10,000 plastic bottles a year just by bringing the product with them. So in a way, it kind of becomes like a, a lifestyle tool to not only um, impact the problem overseas, but also impact the problem um, at home. 
so that's sort of that's what we're doing in a in a long uh, nutshell i think but um i don't know if you have any more more questions erica um well my first question is you say that every time you fill up a bottle that funds more plastic collection how does that how where does that money come from so that that's going to come from uh so just to clarify here um, each of our products is NFC enabled and we're currently building a platform which okay. will enable this, uh, these interactions. <clears throat> so, so what NFC is? Is a near field communication chip. So it's basically the same as an, an RFID tag. Mm -hmm. uh, but what it means is, it means that you can actually, all phones, all Android and iOS phones mm -hmm. from 2018 have got NFC reading uh, capabilities. So it means that you can actually tap your phone to your bottle. Mm -hmm. You can register your bottle. You can find refill locations around you mm -hmm. on the Ocean Bottle app. And you'll also be able to see how much impact each of these partners makes each time you fill a bottle. Okay. So, uh, for example, um, if you had, a, if you had a, a lunch chain, right? And they're offering each time you go into them and refill... Uh, they will fund collection equivalent to 50 plastic bottles. And the incentive for them is that they're encouraging loyalty. Uh, so it's a customer acquisition cost, which is, is a, it's a very normal business model. Um, if, you, if you think about reusable bottles at the moment, and reusable coffee cups, they're you know, giving out discounts of 25 to 50p um, for, for, for that incentivizing that behavior. So in a way, it's about incentivizing people to bring with them their bottle, um, but also, you know, making much more impact on the problem. So as a company, if we have a million of these out there, you know, we, we can actually create 10 times the impact per year through this platform, which is incredibly exciting to us. And what's next for you? Have you got partnerships with restaurants or drinks providers lined up or is that, is that a potential? That you'd be able to yes. get the water in it, but if you, I don't know, buy a Coke, you can put the Coke straight in the bottle instead of having the plastic, for example. Or... Yeah, we, I mean, we would love that. And, and um, I think there's a huge movement towards refill in general. I think what we're seeing is that um, the, the transportation of water doesn't make any sense. You know, sending bottles of, of Evian to London, um, just, just as one example, creates 80 times more CO2 than filling up from the tap. Mm -hmm. And we now have technology which enables us to filter water perfectly in all over the world um, and both make it safe to drink, but also just as, as, as tasty as, um, mm -hmm. as mineral water. <laughs> so I think, yeah, on that side, there's huge opportunities um, to, to collaborate um, on, on the refill side. But also, um, yeah, so, so we, we and just in terms of that, we've got a couple of pilots uh, that we were looking to run this year. Obviously, COVID sort of delayed a few things, actually getting up and running on the ground. Um, but yeah, we are looking to kick off things as soon as uh, cafes open. Cool. Um, no, perfect. So we've got a few questions um, coming from other people. So Mark uh, Walsh is asking that if he retires in two years and will be sailing back to the west coast of Scotland, he's trying to make us jealous here, and if he may invest in a precious plastics setup, do you have any pointers or any experience in dealing with precious plastics? So I confess I've never heard about that, precious plastics. Um, I've, that's such a good question. I, I wish I was on your boat. It sounds brilliant. <laughs> Please invite us. Um, yeah, pressure, so pressure, I mean, the, the core issue with plastics, right, and the main issue why, why we have ocean plastic is because it's cheaper to produce new plastic than it is to recycle it. Um, yeah, there's no value associated to, which is changing now, mind you, uh, but that has been the core issue for 50 years. And there's still plastics today, which the value is so low that it costs money to recycle it. So there's absolutely no financial incentive to, to recycle it apart from protecting the environment. So at the moment, you know, what, what uh, we're looking at is actually having to subsidize that value, uh, both through 
sort of premium recycled plastics and, and you know, the marketing around that, but also having to, to subsidize collection directly, which we're doing. Um, and actually, you know, the setup of, of collection points. But in the end, what we want to move towards is extended producer responsibility. So producers basically pay to produce plastic, which funds um, recycling infrastructure. So, um, yeah, I think it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a huge uh, question. Um, I don't actually, I'm not an expert on precious plastics themselves. I don't know if that, you know, please comment on the Q&A if we're talking plastics that are more valuable than diamonds and gold. Uh, I've never heard of that, but it sounds great. But yeah, I mean, as far as, far as I know, you know, this, this is, we're talking about increasing the value so that um, we can, you know, we can create, um, so that we can create a closed loop, basically. Because we, we cannot continue to, to live in this linear system. So I think, I think I saw one other Q and A, which was a great question. And it's, we often get asked this straight away, which, you know, which we uh, often forget to talk about, but it's, it's such an integral question. And it is, what is the bottle made of? Right. So uh, we, we do use ocean bound plastic in production. And it's actually the base plate here where the smart chip sits, but the bottle itself is actually, it's made from stainless steel, recycled stainless steel. Um, and the purpose of this is that it's, it's easy to clean, easy to fill. You can put it in the dishwasher. It really is a lot more versatile than a lot of other products out there on the market. Um, and then, and we've also made sure that the bottle's fully recyclable uh, at the end of its life. So it has <clears throat> absolutely no composite materials, which, which means that that's actually possible. Because if you use composites, it's, it's incredibly difficult. So, yeah, um, I just thought I'd, I'd chip in on that one as well. Cool. No, thank you. Um, is, what's happening with the cost of producing new plastic? Is that still going down? And That's what still is, going down. Is, I mean, is the plastic it's, it's, tax needed or what, what is needed to... So what, what's needed is the, the, the value of uh, recycled plastics to go up above. Because as soon as that happens which is or it is already starting to happen we're already crossing that inflection point but as soon as recycled plastic is more valuable than um virgin plastic that that's that's a natural uh choice mm -hmm. so the the issue you know virgin but virgin plastic continues to plummet in in uh, in price Okay, no, fine. Thank so if that, I'm not actually sure that made any sense, but, um, you know, please, please let me know if I need to rephrase has, that. Has there been any talk about a plastic tax or is that depending on every worldwide government to implement that? No, that, that is actually, uh, it's very much a discussion. So um, uh, I know that the Alliance to End Plastic Waste are, are particularly focused on that and they work with big conglomerates in the space. Um, and there, there is there is talk of um, extended producer responsibility, and it was sort of a, a very you no know, no topic. Producers didn't want to get into that, but I think everyone's starting to realise that it, it it's going to be necessary um, in order to to solve all of this. Sure. So, but you've also got issues where a lot of plastic can't be. So, forty percent of plastic is packaging. And that is, that is the largest issue. 40% of plastic production is packaging, um, most of which is single use. So you've got to ask yourself, why are we wrapping a salad in a material that lasts for 400 years? Mm. Yeah? It, it makes no sense when either you could not wrap it in the first place, uh, and we can use plastic sensibly, or you can have a compostable material that goes in with with any food waste, preferably no food waste, but um, you know, it, it, it can be home compostable. So it, plastics are incredibly valuable. You know, we wouldn't be in the 21st century. We wouldn't have any of the technology we have without it. Um, it's not that, it's, it's just the fact that we have to rethink how we use the material, uh, what we produce it for, and what happens to it after we've used it. Um, and how, you know, really we do need to close the loop. What is the other 60% of plastic? 
Um, a car, for example, has got 350 kilograms of plastic, okay. which you might, you know, you might not think, but that material enables the car to be very lightweight. Mm -hmm. So it's actually quite a beneficial thing. There's no reason why you couldn't use recycled plastic in that application. Mm -hmm. The issue for packaging is that it's very difficult to recycle plastic at the moment and uh, get food grade certification. So a lot of a lot of recycled plastics uh, it's it's difficult to get them back you know in in the same value stream um right. but that is becoming more common now okay thank you edward is asking if you work with worldwide organizations such as un the wwf um um in order to push on governments to implement the sustainable policies for water refilling infrastructure yes so uh, we do actually work with all of the above um the we have a, an event tomorrow with um, the UN Secretary General's Special Envoy for the Oceans, Peter mm -hmm. Thompson. So he oversees all ocean action for the preservation of ocean health, um, and is within within the space. He, he's probably regarded sort of sort of one of those at the top. Mm -hmm. um, and we'll be doing actually an event about. Uh, imagining a perfect 2030. So go check out uh, the event. I, I can post the link, or it's on our Instagram. On uh, our Instagram is Ocean Bottle at Ocean Bottle, um, and our website is www.oceanbottle.co. I'll share the link um, and email to everyone later. Yeah, that that would be fantastic. It should be a really interesting session. And and um, so what we're doing is we're going on a virtual trip to 2030. And we're going to look at all of the incredible things that have happened for ocean health. So, you know, we would have ended the flow of plastics into the ocean. We would have protected 30% of, um, of uh, the ocean as marine protected areas, which is actually an incredible space in terms of the digital technology that's required. You know, we're talking AI, drone technology to monitor, uh, monitor illegal fishing. Uh, the list just goes on. Um, so yeah, we're going to be going on a trip to 2030 to look at the journey of, of what's happened, hopefully. Um, and we'll have, yeah, Peter Thompson from, from the United Nations, uh, Special Envoy for the Oceans. We will have Christina Mittermeier, who perhaps is the founder of conservation photography. So she's a, a National Geographic speaker. And if you've ever seen a photo of a polar bear, in Antarctica, it's probably from her and her husband. Oh. She is incredible. So she's, she's gonna be talking about um, ocean conservation and, and conservation in general. And we also have uh, Danny Washington, who is the first female black uh, science TV presenter mm -hmm. in the United States. And um, <clears throat> she basically wants to inspire people to, to come and join the, the movement for the oceans because there are so many people in the world that still haven't even experienced uh, the oceans. So, and also to, to get into STEM and to get into science. So it should be, should be a really good event. Yeah, we, we work very closely with um, scientific advisors to really question everything we're doing and make sure that we're going the right way because I'm not an expert in the space. Um, I like to think that I know a little bit more now than, than when we started, but I think it's really important to work with, with uh, absolute experts in, in their fields. So we have an advisory board who, who help us out uh, in, that, in that area. Cool. Amazing. Thank you. Uh, Yanis is asking, what is the lifespan of the bottle and how do you measure it in months, years, number of uses? Um, so the lifespan is estimated to be about 10 years. So we've done, we've done sort of life cycle analysis on it. Um, so what, what was the other question, Erica? Um, and yeah, how, how you measure the life. <clears throat> okay, so the average European uses, uh, I believe it's 152 plastic bottles a year on average. Gosh. So it's, which, just which is water. when, just the water, that's only water. Which when you start to think about that, it, it, it really piles up. The UK alone uses 38 million plastic bottles a day. And 
over half of those uh, end up in landfill, the environment, or, or get incinerated. So it's, it is, it's just a huge, you know, it's, it's a problem that it's so easy. You know, I used to chug plastic bottles because I wasn't any wiser. I think it's important that we're all a bit sort of like, you know, we're n no one was a perfect environmentalist even a few years ago. I'm still not a perfect environmentalist. And there's, we have such a long way, way to go. But um, it is just, it's such an easy thing to bring with you. It's just like everyone is drinking water. You have to drink water bring this with you you can fill it up and germ the juice with a juice you can put a coffee in it shove it in the dishwasher couldn't be easier just bring it with you honestly um so i think that's just an obstacle to go overcome and plastic bottles are only a, a, a part of the, the issue right in in the plastic space and in the waste space but at least it's a start and at least it's somewhere where it's easy for people to begin and it's sort of like a gateway drug i think to environmentalism is at least how we see it. Um, but yeah, so for us, we wanted the lifespan to be really high. Um, it's, so it's estimated to be about 10 years. We are setting up a, <clears throat> we'll be setting up a closed loop recycling scheme. So you'll be able to, either you can actually home recycle it if you take it apart, um, but you can, you'll also be able to send it in and then we'll actually turn it into new ocean bottles in the future, uh, which I think is, is really important because the last thing we want is to solve one problem and then contribute to delayed landfill, which is just a catastrophe. And also being able to register, register them digitally means that we will have a really good oversight of whose bottles have been returned and so on. So, you know, it's, it's, there's so much that we can do with that, which is really exciting. Well, no, thank you. David is saying thank you for sharing your story. How do the plastic collectors get rewarded and mainly in the other um, less developed countries without the access to technology? That's a, a plastic bank question, I think, for you. <clears throat> yeah, it's a plastic bank. I mean, I've basically become like plastic bank. Uh, <laughs> just live and breathe. I mean, they are the coolest company. They are very cool. They're, they're so cool. They saw, they, you know, they saw this and then they said, let's just set up this tech platform to, to do it um and it, it's it's amazing and um but yeah just to 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 talk about actually how it works um the the mobile phone adoption rate is actually incredible um but it's actually not that's not actually how it works so if you're a plastic collector you and you have a, a smartphone you can create a, a a profile on your phone on the app if you don't have a smartphone the branch manager so he has a smartphone or she has a smartphone and they can set up a profile for you. So every time you go and collect plastic, they'll register it to your profile. And you know that it's kind of like going to your, it's plastic bank, right? It's like going to your bank branch. Um, and for many of these people it is genuinely, it's their first bank account yeah. um, in, in, a, in, a, in a way. Well, so it's, when it's, we had, uh, sorry to interject, when we had Sean Pearson, who's, uh, not Sean Pearson, Sean Frankson, who's the founder, one of the co-founders of Plastic Bank, he said for some people who aren't, for whatever reason, able to take home money or it isn't safe for them to take home money or they, they don't, they can't do that, they can also swap the plastic they collect um, for school feeds or for food at market stalls or cleaning products, for example. Yeah, no, ex exactly. So there's a whole... There's a whole ecosystem behind it. Um, so the, 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 you know, they're trying to take that really far as well um, so that people will be able to swap for a range of things and that it's not just about money, but also, but also other, other things. Um, <clears throat> so I think that, that's, that's incredibly exciting. And they, you know, they recently launched the Plastic Collector Relief Fund, um, which they so basically how that works is it's a fund and it means that collectors can actually get a, a, a loan they can get an advanced loan and then pay it back in due course with, with zero interest so it's also you know it's 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 a great resource in the event of disasters like we've just had now um but also other future disasters but then who knows, it could even expand into, you know, microfinance and being able to take out a loan to start something yourself. 
so it's uh, it's quite cool no thank you uh, kate is saying that as demand <coughs> for falls as decarbonization kicks in will virgin plastic producers become a user of last resort for oil and how will this affect virgin plastic versus recycling is that dependent on legislation I love that question. That is such a good question as well. They've all been really good, but that was a really good question. Um, I'd recommend watching a Netflix documentary called The Story of Plastics. Um, there's also a really interesting one uh, about DuPont, which I won't get into, but there's, you know, there's so many great documentaries out there. I will, I will, I will also link, yeah. Um, <clears throat> that, you know, that is, that is something that could happen. It, it really is if if you if you're talking about well the estimation okay for plastic production is that by 2050 plastic production is going to quadruple so that that that's what we're, that is which you've literally answered you know that that's the answer to the question unless we drastically change unless unless we drastically change so unless uh recycled plastic becomes more valuable um, but also, you know, cheap, cheaper to produce so that you get that inflection point. Um, unless there's legislation on virgin plastic production, unless there's extended producer responsibility on particularly non-recyclable plastics, you know, they are the worst kind because they're being put into the world and the people who produce them have no responsibility for what happens to them. Um, and that, <clears throat> that is the world we live in. You're, you're allowed to do something and you know you don't pay you pay uh, corporate tax but you don't pay any environmental tax or social tax so um, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a very interesting time and I think it, it's going to change very much over the next decades. Well thank you. Elena is asking if the NFC chip enables you to track data on refill um, bottle use and if so what have you found? Yeah, so so as the platform isn't actually live yet, so you can you can actually tap your phone to the bottle today, and you can register your bottle. But for us, it's been it's been sort of a, a strategic preference to get the company off the ground and focus on the product and, and the impact first, and and the platform second. So, but yes, you 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 can you can. Um, you can track that and i think it's it's interesting for it's interesting for the, the partners that we work with to be able to see you know what a sustainable incentive causes mm -hmm. to actually be able to see the positive behavior that you're creating by you know putting it putting a sustainable incentive so yes and i think i think that's a really exciting part of it absolutely Oh, no, amazing. Obviously, being GDPR, GDPR compliant, though. <laughs> um, David is saying that if you're, well, you, as you're using blockchain as a reward system, it sounds good. Or do you have any other platform that could be replicated for other green initiatives? Separate to plastic bottles. Yeah. So, <clears throat> for example, as, as a company, uh, you know, we're, we're doing carbon offset. I mean, te technically, each of our products is actually carbon positive. Mm -hmm. because uh, when we recycle a thousand plastic bottles that, that we collect mm -hmm. that actually has has a carbon offset equivalent to almost 18 kilograms of mm -hmm. co2 and the footprint of each of these is about 3.8 kilo kilograms mm -hmm. so you're, we're technically already carbon positive but we're also going to be offsetting that um, production carbon just to actually have the certification of, of being carbon neutral um, just to, you know just to why not i mean we literally have to just go all out and do absolutely everything we can because i don't we literally have nothing to lose um but we have everything to lose but um so yeah just to come back to your question you know we're doing carbon offset and we're, we'll be doing mangrove restoration projects so absolutely there's there's ways in which you could potentially contribute to other projects as well i mean for us it will always be about ocean health um and and the environment in general so but but yeah i mean it can go all sorts of uh, directions i think yeah great thank you um and scott is asking how can one support countries with poor waste infrastructure um to encourage them not to dispose 
plastic waste into an ocean in the first place? Yes, I think it's I think it's twofold. Um, I think it's it's part of it is inspiration. I think you've got to you've got to inspire people about the oceans. Um, and one of our advisory board members <clears throat> is called Afroz Shah, and he's the UN. He's one of the UN champions of the Earth. Mm -hmm. And what he did was he got eighty thousand people to clean up a beach in India. Uh, so he, they collected almost 25 million kilograms of plastic okay. uh, in oh. Mumbai. And when he started, he started 25 million kilograms of plastic at one beach cleanup. Yeah. But it's, it's been a, it's been a six year beach cleanup. I mean, okay. they, they've been going, uh, and they, they only, they finally had turtles come back to the beach. I think it was potentially last year, which was just like the most incredible thing. And when he started, you know, he had plastic up to his n nipples, wow. quite literally, uh, or you could probably say shoulders, <laughs> for, for use of a better For the phrase. sake of LinkedIn reproduction. <laughs> for, for, yeah, so, sake of, exactly. P, let's keep it PC, guys. Um, but yeah, so he, he, he had such an insurmountable challenge when he started, and he just started collecting the plastic and eventually locals actually started to join him and it was first then that he started to inspire others to come and join as well so it became his movement and what he turned it into was a date with the ocean so there's so many people in rural india have never seen the ocean they've never put their toes into it they've never experienced that sort of joy and calm that you get um, for many who, who experience the ocean. And I think for him, that was essential for people to see the damage that plastic is doing to the sea and to come and experience it firsthand and bring that back home to their village and actually become like, you know, environmental champions at home. Because I think a big part of it is for sure inspiration. I think it is getting the world to just fall in love with the planet yeah and why that's so important and and yeah i i'm i'm yeah incredibly positive about the potential for that at the same time i think we have to make it easy um but it's also got to be worth people's time you know if if you're a, if you are a subsistence um you know if you live a subsistence lifestyle and you depend on on your income day to day you know you, you, you don't have time to go out and, and collect plastic so as soon as you can actually make it easy to do so yeah and you can put a value on that material i think that that changes everything um so sort of it's almost the problem from both ends it's sort of we need to inspire people to um be a part of this and use less not only use less single use plastic but we need to put immense pressure on plastic producers to stop producing single use plastic they keep pointing the finger at us yeah. we need to point the finger at them it's not our it's not our fault it's their fault and what would it so take think, to like so like sorry to no, let you continue no 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 please no no please please ask your question what would it take for the likes of coca-cola to just not use plastic um, so that is, that is a, an immense question. I think, you know, we've got to focus on the worst single use plastics, uh, which really are the likes of sachets, non-recyclables. So there's enough sachets produced each year. The little, you know, sachets that you get like coffee and you get hair shampoo and actually they, uh, they come the, in the, micro. The real single use little things. Exactly. And they, they sell them in sari sari shops. Um, and what's amazing about them is they enable people with very little income to buy them, mm. um, you know, on a sort of day to day income. You can you can have access to luxury products like, you know, shampoo and, and so well, on, I, I which is great. Industry that, um, that the sachets work out per use a fraction of the cost of buying a bottle of shampoo. Yeah. No, 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 exactly. So there's, there's, but I, no, but actually the sachet contributes to 30% of the total cost of the item. So the, the, the cost of the packaging is actually quite high, surprisingly high. 
But the issue is obviously they are totally non-recyclable <clears throat> and also they have no value and they just end up everywhere. They list the streets, they flood out into rivers and waterways and straight out into the ocean. Mm -hmm. And it's a huge problem. So we did a hackathon with Unilever um, and we actually came up with a, a plastic free, a packaging uh, free alternative to their sachets. So we had, um, it was actually like a bath bomb uh, mm -hmm. format that, and it was going to be 30, it would have been almost 30% cheaper than the current sachets. So it solved all the problems yeah. in one basically. And then they're, they're piloting this now in Indonesia. Uh, they're starting in Indonesia. And they'll come in these like Nespresso long cardboard tube formats. Mm -hmm. And you can just sort of pick one out and, and go off with it without any packaging. You know, no packaging, no problems, basically, is, is the situation mm -hmm. there. For um, Coca-Cola... And, and what's think, needed for them to actually start using it? What was needed, uh, they need to trial it. You know, they need to test and trial it. And they're a slow, big behemoth. Um, and unless there's sort of either Greta Thunberg pressure on them from the consumers... Mm -hmm or legislation, uh, it's, it's, it, it would take a very, very, very long time for them to change their habits. But luckily, we are putting the pressure on now and things are changing. So, you know, for, 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 for the likes of Coca-Cola, I think refill is, is going to be a huge solution because transporting all that liquid makes no sense when they have the syrups and you can, you know, get, get your beverage on, on site. Um, and I think people are at least there's a big movement towards healthier beverages, more sparkling water with you know, vitamin additives and fla natural flavors and stuff like that. So mm -hmm. I think it's, it's a really exciting space. Yeah, cool. And biodegradable packaging does need to play a big role. So what, so what I was talking about was sort of two angles. One is cutting down on plastic production. <clears throat> and that is basically getting rid of single use plastic packaging as it exists today. And on the other hand, we need to increase infrastructure and collection of the plastic. Mm -hmm. Because even if we remove all the packaging, there's still going to be so much other valuable plastic that needs to be collected before going into the ocean. So that's how we're going to, that's how we're going to solve this. It's a, it's, a, it's a both sides attacking it. So that's, that's what we're trying to do. Cool. Amazing. Thank you. So Ali is saying that it's very interesting to hear about your product and experience so far. Do you have a third party authenticating the recycled plastic used in your bottle? I think that's another plastic bank question, but do you know how <clears> they <throat> actually do that? Um, yeah, no, no, that's, that's a really, really, really good question. That is definitely a plastic bank question, but I can answer it to the best of my ability. Um, so when the plastic is collected, it's verified um, that it's collected. Then it goes to the main collection hub where the volumes are verified again. So there's basically a, 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 a check of the digital tokens versus what arrives. So there's another verification there. Then it all gets processed um, and then verified again at, at the end stage. So in a way, you know, it's being verified at every, every stage. Um, I'm not sure if they actually have an, a third party for the material verification, um, I knew I know that they do for the you know IBM is the you know they they are their partner on the digital token side, um, and we you know we get collection reports basically from what has been collected, where, when uh, you know at which collection branch, so we you know we've supported over. I think 150 different collection points now uh, dotted around Indonesia, uh, Haiti, Brazil, and, and the Philippines. <clears throat> so we can track exactly where things are being collected and, and um, when. Okay. And Carlo, That's a great question. Carlo is asking, is there any crossover with offsetting the carbon footprint of companies in the supply chain from producer to retailer? Sorry, could you repeat that, Erica? If there's any crossover uh, with offsetting the carbon footprint of companies in the supply chain from producer to retailer. 
Right, right, okay, I see. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I think, I think, definitely, there's there's scope for that. Already, you know, already a lot of um, a lot of retailers are doing carbon offsets. You know, at, at the at the retail point. So, in terms of um, what are, I don't know, what are some good examples? Mm-hmm. You know, fashion brands perhaps that offer carbon neutral clothing that are yeah. they're doing the offset themselves as re- they're technically retailers but the suppliers themselves are you know they're not um they're not offsetting okay. their carbon no okay no thank you um we've got a, a couple of people posted about sharing the link to asian bottle that they want to buy one so i've just posted that in the oh. group for anyone wants a hands on ones i'm desperate to get one thank so you so much have thank to order, you so much order mine as well um yeah we'd love reviews as well we love uh you know pe- the, the community getting involved we need where like, would you like needs to get involved where would you like us to review is that a google review um yeah we do well we have reviews on the website so that that's the dream okay is, is a, a review on the website absolutely on it no we'll, we'll order and do that um and start is asking what is done with the collected plastic waste is it sorted and then recycled in a sort of thermoplastic recycling and what kind of products are then made out of that other than of course ocean bottles yeah no that's that's a really good question so um obviously ocean bottle only uses a tiny amount of plastic that we actually collect right so it's, a, it's an impact product first and foremost so I think we use 15 grams of plastic for each bottle and you know, we collect over 11 kilograms. So it's, it's, it's worlds apart. So the, the plastic is, is collect, all of it is recycled and pelletized depending on the different uh, format of mm-hmm. the different type of plastic. And they actually sell it to other products, so uh, other corporate partners typically. So the likes of Henkel, uh, Marks and Spencer, buy the material, um, and uh, other other buyers. Mm-hmm. But at this stage, we have such a massive problem to solve that we still need a lot of funding to actually go into the deployment of, of collection points um, and the subsidization of, of the material. Mm-hmm. So I don't know if that, that answers the question. What, what type of products would be the ideal products to be using recycled? plastic i know for example just having spoken to nike that they're using a lot of recycled plastic in their shoes and clothing what what other types of product would be the best for just using up all of the recycled plastic that possibly can't get yeah i think um the you know the really long-term products Mm -hmm. that are that are sort of you know uh also recyclable at end of life yeah so in that category We've got sort of chairs, if basic furniture. Mm-hmm. Um, there's also companies using plastic as eco bricks, so you can actually build your house with it. Mm-hmm. There's there's a lot of recent concern about plastic in general. I mean, not to open another can of worms, <laughs> but basically, there's huge amounts of microplastic in the air mm-hmm. and in the water. Uh, so literally the, the air we breathe and the water that we drink mm-hmm. is contaminated with microplastic. Um, the plastic isn't a problem in itself, but it's, it's porous and it absorbs toxins and it right. releases those toxins in your body. So that's sort of a, a whole thing to factor in. So like whether or not schools should be made from plastic when potentially this plastic is going out into the air that kids are breathing yeah. is is a whole other a whole other question um but you know there's 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 absolutely loads of, of use cases um but i think the main thing is that we stop producing plastic mm-hmm. if we have more than enough plastic out there in the world to recycle and turn into to new products um but yeah i think i think that's that's a great question and it's it's still undefined uh, cool. but preferably everything uh, and this guy's just come to <coughs> use recycled plastic for uh, special types of pipes or tele- telecommunication and uh, in Plastic Road. It's a European project, so he's obviously working in the space. Yeah, amazing. Amazing. Yeah, that's um, very cool. He- sorry, Henry is asking if you need a certain grade of plastic for reuse and what can you do with, with plastics that don't <laughs> recycle plastics? 
Yeah, so as I, as I mentioned, um, you know, for the, for the food grade packaging applications and for our bottle, for example, you need food grade um, certification. Mm -hmm. So a lot of recycled plastics, it's impossible to achieve that. And right. also, you know, um, there's a big issue. We're not, we're not near 100% uh, recycled plastic either. Right. We're just at 50%, which still means we're using... 50% 50, 50 virgin so we've still we've still got half the problem um, but yeah so in, in terms of the certification um, the mechanical this is getting really deep now but you know, mechanical recycling mm -hmm. often degrades the quality of, of the plastic the mechanical properties of the plastic so there's new recycling technologies out there Mm -hmm. You can check out Pure Cycle. I think they're really interesting. Pure Cycle Technologies who are able to literally take a carpet from a mm -hmm. conference, churn it up and make 100% virgin, food grade, safe, uh, recycled plastic. Yeah. Which is quite cool. So there, there are new technologies out there. Um, they're just super expensive, right? So it's the usual uh, thing of commercialization and, and long timelines mm -hmm. but the faster we can do it the better okay cool um i've got a question for you. this is going back a bit what made you start i know the answer what made you start but what what encouraged you to start um ocean bottle and more to the point how did you start how did you start about finding out about recycled plastic how did you start designing bottles marketing them getting your first customers how because you've grown an incredible business actually really quickly how did you go about doing that? Oh, well. I think Will's just frozen temporarily. Yep, yeah, we've just lost Will for a minute. Will had this before, before we uh, started, but um, he's in Norway, so I think his uh, signal's a bit shaking. No, um, we can't hear you, Will. He's just text. Oh. Hey, Will. No. Yeah, no, he's just uh, text at uh, he, he lost signal, but he's just logged out and, and joining back again. Um, does anybody, whilst we're waiting for Will to rejoin, does anybody else have any other questions that, um, that they want asked or answered for when he gets back and joins us again? Will Pearson, huh? Hey, Will. Hey, Will. Hello, can you, hey, can you hear me yeah, now? Yeah, you're back, you're back. Back again, Great. Back. sorry about that. No, it's all touchy, good. Uh, touchy uh, signal. Thanks for joining again. Yeah, so your question was? What, what made you start and how did you start? How did you start? Um, how did you come up with the idea? How did you start getting the bottles? How did you start designing them? How did you find the, the recycled plastic marketing? Because you've obviously grown a, a super successful business in a very short space of time. Thank, yeah, thanks so much. Thanks so much, Erica. Um, yeah, it's been, it's been a bit of a journey, to be honest. I think the whole thing started with um, individuals. So, yeah, we were obsessed with people wanting to do something about um, ocean plastic, you know, amongst other environmental uh, challenges, but wanting to do something about it and not really being able to have a big direct impact on the problem. Mm -hmm. So for us, it was just, it was from the outset, it was about connecting those people to the issue um, and 
that was when we found, you know, I met two scientists and they introduced me to Plastic Bank. So, you know, we decided to partner with them instead of trying to set up a, a global recycling network because mm -hmm. you know, it's an incredibly difficult job and, and they've done a great job already. Um, so it's enabled us to just focus solely on on individuals, on consumers and uh, enabling them to have an impact on the problem. Yep. So, yeah, so impact was, was key from the outset. We wanted it to be as high as possible, um, but then we also wanted to have a product that was really versatile and that people could use just like every day and, and have with them. Mm -hmm. So we just, I remember we did like the initial survey. We just put out a survey to some random people and asked, hey, would you be willing to pay a premium for uh, a bottle that does this for the oceans? Yep. And I think it was 86% of people said yes. So, you know, it's, it's all very well saying that, but actually doing it. And we actually found out that they did do that. So it's, um, it's been a, a tremendous journey since, since then. We did a crowdfund and um, got the product to some amazing places. We had Ed Sheeran, you know, who bought uh, bottles for his tour uh, through to companies like Ernst & Young, McKinsey, uh, Paddy have bought uh, bottles for their dive centers. They have 6,000 dive centers worldwide, 27 million certified divers. Uh, so the, the partnership opportunities are immense to do something really big about opportunity, about the problem. But also ultimately working with the people who have got that bottle in their hand every day, waging the war on plastic. Um, and also the collectors on the other side of the world doing the, the hard work mm -hmm. um so yeah it's 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 that's kind of that's it and yeah we we just wanted to make as big of an impact as possible um and hopefully we're going in the right direction love it have you got any other products lined up so for us it's it's been quite key to just focus on the one product and, and perfect it i think um <clears throat> I don't know, I can't I really think of any other one product companies, but you know, there's a few other companies out there that are called the same, you know, product name as their company name. Mm -hmm. Uh but it, it yeah, it enables us to just focus solely on that. Um Chili's a bottle company with they're the first fastest growing company in the UK last year. They sell three million bottles a year um so there's a huge opportunity to actually make some impact mm -hmm. um and yeah so I, I can't quite recall what you're saying um otherwise but i probably answered the question no okay no thank you has anyone else got any other questions at all ah carlo's just added a question how does the product tie in with various legislation coming in such as the sep directive which would have major impact on ppe products um minimum recycled content as announced by the chancellor in the last budget so 200 pounds for a ton of plastic packaging containing less than 30 percent and the ec circular plastics alliance commitment to use 10 million tons of used plastics into new products by 2025 and do you believe that plastic is a problem of or plastic waste so that is the last question in the q a if you want to reread that if i so, oh my yeah. goodness what a what a what a bombshell to end on that is that's enormous i mean we could be here for another hour can we but um let's Happily. not we'll, we'll go for a quick one um yeah so how it i would suppose how it ties in with with our product um I don't, i'm not sure if you meant directly with sort of legislation with regard with, with regards to the ocean bottle or not probably not um i think reusable bottles should probably be you know, almost VAT exempt um, and greatly encouraged. But yeah, in terms of um, single use plastic production, there's no doubt that they'll have a, a big impact uh, on that. And, and hopefully, as we see more and more of this come through, we can stop the massive uh, problem of the potential quadrupling of plastic by, by 2050. So I think with the public pressure with uh, business, you know, public pressure on business, 
um, with new legislation coming in that you just mentioned, with innovation and breakthroughs, I really think we can and, and we will solve some of the big challenges that we face. Okay. And last, do, oh, the last point on that, do you think it's plastic that's a problem or plastic waste? Oh, gosh. I've got to watch myself, yeah? No. Uh, I think, well, I think, yeah, I mean, plastic waste is obviously a problem, right? That's, this is just a huge problem. And then you've got to, then you've got to come and kind of come back. So, like, how did it become waste? So I think, yeah, plastic in itself is definitely a problem because of uh, the types that are produced, the way it's produced, the quantity that's produced. We need to rethink all of it. Uh, we have to rethink all of it. But then, obviously, on the waste side, um, so that, that's sort of the design side of, of the problem. And then on, on the, the waste side, yeah, I mean, we, we really need to think about how we... Uh, collect it and and turn it back into new stuff no, cool amazing henry is suggesting that you link to the yachting and sailing crowd and the ria for the olympic sailing teams as a, yeah that's a great uh, shout we've actually just launched a partnership with the ria um so they are yeah they're they're getting involved ocean models i think we're on their website very hopefully cool. No, well, thank you. Um, well, thank you so much for answering all of those questions and telling us so much. Um, there's a couple of links that I'll be sharing. I'll send an email out to those. If you've got any other links for, if you can just WhatsApp those to me and I'll get those um, sent out to everyone. But uh, I know a few people have messaged saying they've just bought ocean bottles. Oh, so that, that's great news. Thank you so much. That's, um, yeah, literally. So thank Brilliant. you so much for joining us. Really grateful to you for giving up your time and sharing more information about Ocean Bottle. And thanks to everyone for joining us and posing all of their questions. Thank you so much, Erica. Thank you. Thank you. And I Absolute you pleasure. Look forward to seeing you back in London. Yeah, cheers. Okay. Super curry. Cheers. Bye. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Hello. Hey, Nikki. I'm just going to, because of, because of the recording, also, I will re-record the, um, the, the intro bit. Oh, okay. Yeah. So do you want and me to... We'll, uh, no, I just, it's just nice to have you there as a, um, <laughs> I don't know, moral support so that I'm not just talking to myself. He was really good. Yeah. Amazing. Um, so no, um, I'll just re-record that last bit. Ahmed, you're still there. Have you got any other questions at all? Or... Hello? Yeah, I think he's gone. Okay, yeah, no, was, it says there's one uh, attendee left, but no. Um, no, it was really good. Um, I just forgot to record the intro, intro bit, so I'll just do that um, sure, now, sure. and then we'll have to um, work out a way to, to just sort of chop and change, um, chop and change those. Um, so um, everyone, thank you very much for joining us at this Tech for Sustainability webinar. We're joined now by Will, who's uh, the co-founder of Ocean Bottle. They're an incredible uh, platform that use uh, the plastic bank IBM blockchain for recycling plastic bottles. Every one of their bottles takes a thousand plastic bottles out of the ocean uh, and a really, really cool and exciting startup. So very excited to be joined by Will today. And um, just before we start, very grateful to Tracer. So this Tech for Sustainability webinar series is sponsored by Tracer, their uh, connected value chain platform. They foster a culture of um, innovation and uh, encourage sustainable business practices and ensure consumer trust in the diamond industry. They work with De Beers and some of the largest diamond producers in the world and demonstrate provenance, traceability and authenticity of natural diamonds and help local economies um, where they're mined. So anyone can find out more just by going to community 
dot tracer that's t r a c r dot com um so very grateful to tracer the the diamond uh, blockchain for supporting this webinar series and um over to you will thank you very much for joining us <laughs>